I recorded a post yesterday about an article that I'd seen on a website called This Is Money and it was about the headline was about um, over 50s being skivers and I did a, a lovely long mini rant about it well I looked at some of the numbers to kind of break that down as to why that isn't a thing um, and of course my camera decided to corrupt that entire post I don't know if I can be bothered to record it again and it's another reminder that I am getting close to needing to replace my current mobile phone because then my current mobile phone will become my camera phone which I use for recording and I won't have to deal with this problem it's just so annoying um, anyway so it is Tuesday morning um, this morning I woke up to a very large spider climbing up my front room curtains. Um, it is the season of spiders. They come in around about this time of year to find mates and then they go again. Normally I just leave them. I'll get one or two who come in about this time of the year and I just leave them. Occasionally you'll see them scuttle across the, the front room floor in the evening um, and I don't worry about it because there are so many places spiders can hide. Uh, but this one was hanging off my curtain and I decided he had to go, or she had to go, so I popped that one out the window. Um, pictures are there, just to scare the life out of you if you don't like spiders. Um, yeah, that's Tuesday. I'm waiting in for a contractor to come and um, do something at my flat. I think it's the electrical check, I can't remember exactly. Uh, so that is Tuesday. I um, have to be here all day because he could turn up at any time, but that's fine. I already knew that. What else? Um, no update yet on my extra money coming back from Universal Credit. A few people have asked how that claim is going for the interest. Um, I've heard nothing. They did tell me it would take a long time. I would imagine that by the time it actually comes through or I get some sort of information about it that I've probably forgotten I'm even owed it. <laughs> so that's, that's that. Uh, what else? There was something else I was going to add. Today is the 27th of August and on the 27th is normally when my payment from Universal Credit come through. So I've been on my last month um, this is my last month of claim. I put in my money as normal, um, like my uh, finances as normal on the 20th when they ask me to. And then on the 23rd, you're supposed to get a notification to telling you how much you're going to get. And then you get it on the 27th. Well, I've not had the notification on the 23rd and it's now the 27th and nothing has come through. So, hmm could be a little bit of a coincidence that it's my last month and they've now decided that the system's not going to work. It's always worked fine. So, I've put a message into my journal just asking what's happened with that. I suspect that whatever um, I put through on the 20th has somehow miraculously disappeared this month. But I will see. I will um, see what they come back with. I'm just feeling cynical. Um, couldn't possibly be that it's just a delay because of the bank holiday. I mean, last month, they probably want you gone. Let's see. Right, it's Tuesday evening and today felt like a little bit of a waste. I knew I was going to have to wait in for the electrician to come and do his work. By the time he left, it was half past one, and then I did lunch because obviously I couldn't do anything while he was here. So I kept as busy as I could, but I wasn't really in the mood. The weather is atrocious. It's really dark today. It's been raining non-stop, and I just, it just makes me feel so lethargic mentally. Anyway, so I thought I would go over and, and do the cleaning this evening now. I wasn't going to because 
Well, I did a clean at the weekend and we've just had the bank holiday Monday, which means they've only been in today. So it doesn't really justify me going in to do a clean tonight, but I would go in tomorrow. But because I haven't been out all day, I just felt like I needed to get out and go and do something outside that was vaguely useful. So I went over there and as soon as I got to where the gates are, I could see there were at least two people still in the office. So I thought, oh God, do I want to, do I want to, uh, to deal with that today? I really wasn't in the mood. And so I thought, well, I'm out. I might as well go to Morrison's, which is basically next door to where I do the cleaning. And I shouldn't have done that because I didn't need anything. All I was thinking of was that I'm planning to go hiking again later in the week and I don't have anything I can take food wise because I'm not buying stuff like that anymore. Um, I don't have anything that I could take with me to eat when I'm out and about. So I thought, well, I'll go and have a look and see what's in the chill counter because you never know, there might be like a sandwich I could take or something else snacky. There were no vegetables in, but I'm awash with vegetables at the moment. I'm try I've just started to use what's in the freezer uh, to try and create some space. So I went to have a look at the chilled counter, the reduced section, and there was a lot there. And I just lost my mind. So, actually the first thing I saw was uh, on the, 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 the tinned counter where they often put reduced stuff. And they had Marmite and Cheese Nairn Oat Cakes. These were originally £1.25 down to 94p. I normally stop buying this stuff, but these are great for hiking snacks. And there were three boxes. And the good thing is that these will sit in my emergency store cupboard for forever. I've left these in the cupboard for over a year and they've been fine. So those will be great for hiking snacks. Um, there was quite a lot of cheese. This isn't so bad. So we have apple wood, which I think is a smoked cheese. This was £2.86 down to 72p. It's a reasonable sized little block there. There was also, this is a smoked cheese, was £3.11 down to 78p. Little block there, that's really good. And an enormous wedge of Cambazola. This was £3.33 down to 84p. And that's a really good sized chunk. So I need to have a look. Some of these might freeze. This hard one, smoked cheese, might freeze. I'll have a look. Um, but that means I can have fun making some cheese dishes because um, I'm trying not to buy, buy the cheddar, the blocks of mature cheddar at Sainsbury's because I can't justify spending all the, the points. Because I just sit there and eat cheese all day otherwise. Anyway, defeated that object. Um, now, because tomorrow is Wednesday and I'm cleaning, I won't be back here until at least half past two. I tend to buy something that's easy to eat because I've just got to get myself around till dinner and there's no point in making lunch then. So I bought a baguette. This is a ham and coleslaw. It was £3 down to 75p. And then I saw another one. which is an egg and cress baguette, uh, which appears to have lost its price, but it was the same. It's three pounds and down to 75p. So one of these will go with me on my hike and the other one I will have tomorrow when I get back from my cleaning job. Um, I also bought vegetable samosas. I don't know how many's in here, quite a few by the looks of it. These were £2.75, down to 69p, and I bought two. I mean, it could be more unhealthy, couldn't it? But I'm trying to curb the snacking. So, there's that. And then I bought a couple of pieces of this quiche, because I thought they'd be good for dinners for the next couple of nights. One is, uh, just as a quiche slice, was £1.25, down to 32p. Um, and then this is a cheese and onion slice, which is like another quiche. So, 
that's what I bought. All bad stuff, all stuff I'm not supposed to be buying. That in total came to £8.68. So I've pushed my budget right over where it was supposed to be. I'm now up to about £40 this month on my food spend, which is pretty much unheard of these days. Um, the Nan oat cakes will go into the store, so they'll get rolled over, so that'll save three quid on that. I will put up the usual information up there to show what I would have spent. I would imagine the savings on this are pretty good. Um, however, I didn't need any of this stuff. So I'm still generally avoiding ultra-processed. I'm not buying it anymore. Uh, I say that, I think a lot of this was probably what you might call processed. In general, I'm doing pretty well on that. Um, I don't think I'm seeing any difference, even though I'm hiking now and I've cut out a lot of the junky food that I was buying in the supermarket. I don't feel any different. My weight is the same. I don't know whether I was that that's be like a miracle if that would make any difference. I don't I don't feel as lethargic. I don't feel as stodgy as I used to, um, which might be a good sign. I am still having energy slumps in the afternoon, but I think I ne having now got into a routine of not eating that rubbish the problem is that i have started eating other things so i'm at the moment i'm getting terrible carb cravings at about eight o'clock which is way past my cut off time and i'm eating porridge or muesli and i don't need to be eating this i can't justify it. i just have zero control over it so I need to look at why that is happening and why I'm getting those energy slumps. I think it's because I'm still, my sugar take is still wrong. Um, I'm not having as much sugar. I mean, I do home make the odd apple crumble, the odd cake if I have, say, bananas in that need using. Um, I think one of my main problems is that I'm not really a coffee fan, so I have a coffee in the morning but I'm whacking in some of that sugary syrup and that's a really bad habit I've got into over the last couple of years and the worst thing that you can do for yourself if you're trying to manage energy levels and sugar slumps is to basically eat sugar for breakfast. Now, I was watching one of the um, YouTube entries from Zoe who are all about eating habits and things like that a really interesting one today I was watching it's been on my watch list for a while and I haven't watched it and it was about how to control energy slumps and cravings and it was looking at how and when you eat things like sugar and and sh sugar doesn't necessarily mean you know you're not stuffing granulated sugar in your face it that includes starchy things so that includes things like muesli and um, porridge oats and potatoes and if you eat things at the wrong time of day it can really mess up your system so what i need to now need to stop doing i think is i've got to stop doing that sugary coffee in the morning i think this is causing me problems uh, the thing is that i don't actually like coffee so if i don't have the sugar in the coffee in the morning i don't know i'm going to want the coffee at all i'm going to give it a go because I don't think coffee really does anything for me. It doesn't wake me up in the morning. It's just become a routine. So I'm going to try it without the sugar tomorrow. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to go back to tea, which is boring. And I know why I've got used to having the sugar, uh, that sweet coffee in the morning, is because that's my little hit for the morning. You know, I'm a foodie. I like to eat. I like the taste of food. Food is a thing that I do when I have nothing else to do, when I'm bored, when I'm not bored. Um, I, I'm just a foodie. It's the way I am. It's the way I'm hardwired. But if I can remove the addiction to the taste of sugar from, from my diet, after a while I should be able to not miss it and then it will stop triggering um, cravings and me wanting to eat because a lot of the time it's the sugar having eaten the sugar it it kind of it, it spikes in your mind and then it makes you want more 
It's basically a drug. And like any drug, you have to keep having it. So if I can stop with the sugar, now that I've got the ultra process and I've got that out of my routine and I'm not snacking on that stuff anymore, I haven't had peanut butter in over a month and I was practically living on that stuff. So all these things have now gone. Now I can move on to the next stage, which is getting the sugar intake under control because I think that is a lot of my problem as well. So that's my next job is to basically stop eating sugar certainly in the morning that means that breakfast has to change when i have breakfast i don't normally do breakfast i tend to have breakfast if i know i'm going to miss lunch and that normally i will do muesli but that's um, a carbohydrate it's starchy and that is the same problem it's sugar because of the way your body metabolizes it so i need to cut that out and they reckon you should have savory things for breakfast so anything that's not your standard breakfast thing, which are the worst things you can eat apparently. So cereals, toast with, you know, jam and stuff on it, that's all wrong. It gives you the sugar spike at the wrong time of the day and then you're set up for the day for it. So what I'm going to start doing on days where I need to have breakfast, which tends to only be once or twice a week, is I'm for now, because I don't have anything in, I'm going to do hard boiled eggs. Make a couple of hard boiled eggs and have those. There's more protein in it. It should last me longer. I'm going to see how I get on. I'm hardwired for food, so I'm always looking for the next snack sort of thing. So this is going to be a challenge because if I'm taking away all that sugary taste, all those carby things that I love, uh, that's going to be my challenge. So that is my next, my next challenge. So I'm going to do that tomorrow morning. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any ideas about this or you've been through this and you've worked your way through it and worked it out then do drop a line here because uh, this is I've got to get this under control I spent my whole life seesawing between being okay with food and being obsessed by food and all sorts of things and I'm fed up with it I'm now getting too old I'm getting to the point where I cannot get the weight off now and I really have to do something about this so if you've got any ideas let me know this morning I had my coffee without the sweetener that I normally have all right it wasn't uh, wasn't as fun but I guess that's the point and I had a savory breakfast so I had two hard-boiled eggs and some cheese and that smoked cheese that I bought yesterday I bought three I've got the cambazola the apple wood and then a smoked cheese. The smoked cheese is not a smoked cheese, it's a hard cheese. So I've cut it up and put it in the freezer because I can use that in baking things. It was alright but it definitely wasn't smoked. Uh, the apple wood is a smoked cheese so I've kept that out and I'll probably use it for baking and stuff. Yesterday I opened another savings account I keep an eye on money saving experts because they're always updating the savings accounts and it's getting really hard to find a decent savings account. So if I can get anything above 5% um, and I can apply for it then I'll take it out. And a six month fixed at 5% with Atom, which is a digital only bank who I've been banking with for about five years, that came up and uh, I've taken that out. Now that um, I know what's going on with my rent and I have a bit more money to play with, I can afford to put some of that money in chunks into short-term fixed interest accounts and get some extra interest on it. And back in July when I didn't really know what was going on and I thought I was going to have to pay out my six months of rent in one go, I was taking out a bunch of regular savers which have really good interest but because they're regular savers you only gain a little bit each month because you're only putting the money in in small chunks however I have last night when I was doing that new account I had a look at the interest that I'm going to earn next year on those because they're all one year or six month accounts with fixed high interest and when I add up everything that's a fixed account for next year, 
that means I've already earned more interest next year than I have for the whole of this year so far. So it is worth it. And people say, oh, what's the point in a regular saver? You should put big chunks of money in. At the time I was taking out all those regular savers, I couldn't. I didn't have the spare money to throw around into a fixed account that I couldn't access. Now what I've done with the Atom account, which is 5%, I've also got a an account with Yorkshire Building Society, which has been 5% for ages, and you can put up to 10,000 in it. And what I've been doing is keeping my emergency savings in there, because although it's limited access, you can get access. And when you need the money out, it pays really fast. It's like next day. So that account has been 5% for a while. It is dropping down to, I don't know what it is. It's already dropped once and it's going to drop in, I think, October to 4.65 or something. It's going to be a lot lower. 4.6 I think it's going to drop to. So what I've done, I've taken all the money out of that account and put it into the 5% Atom for six months. And then when that matures, I'll put it back where it came from. And that means it's, it's made more interest. And it means that my emergency savings, which I've got in there, and my car fund, which isn't big enough to be a car fund at the moment, um, it wouldn't pay for, it will pay for just under half a car if I was paying outright for a new car. But it means that the interest is growing on that. So it is worth it. I mean, if you only have small amounts of money that you can save, don't let people tell you it's not worth it because if that's what you've got to save, that's what you've got to save. Look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. And so when I was totting up all the interest and realizing how much interest I've already made for next year, um, and that doesn't take into account any of the other um, easy access accounts that I have, which will still earn some interest, even though it's not as much because everything's going down now, except the price of living. The price of living goes up, your savings are going down. It's just, ugh. but I know we've been really lucky with savings rates. They've been really high artificially, I think because of the pandemic, and I've been really reaping the rewards of that. And now what's happening, in fact, is that interest rates are going back to normal. They're slowly going back towards where they would normally be in a normal time. But we're so used to having high interest now that we all freak out when it all drops, like there's a problem with that. The problem is that other things don't also go back down where they were. So you will probably find that your rent won't go back down. Your car insurance will probably take a long time to go back down. Um, your council tax will probably not go down. It's like some things go up and down and some things just keep going up. So, there's that. It's been really wet this week. Um, it's rained a lot. And even today, it's quite warm. It's really close, but it's wet. It's been raining all morning. Tomorrow's supposed to be really nice. I'm hoping to go hiking tomorrow. I've got my route laid out. I've got all my snacks in place based on yesterday. And so yeah, I'm hoping that um, that I can go out and hike because I'm feeling like I really need it. Going out to the cinema on Monday was really good because it just got me out and got me out of my space. Um, but I don't feel like I'm getting out and doing enough. Anyway, so hopefully tomorrow I can get out into nature, up onto the moors, and get a hike in. That's, that's the aim for tomorrow. Try to stay productive. I've been making all sorts of bits of jewellery and new coasters and things like that. So although they're small things and they don't feel like they achieve very much, it's still productive. It's still stuff that's 
happening and all those things that get made get put into the shop and then hopefully people will buy them. But yeah, the times are slow. And I'm just off to my Wednesday clean now. Uh, and then this evening I have to go and do the, the Tuesday evening clean that I didn't do. to the back of me. Now where can we park today? Uh, I think there's a parking down there. There it is. Let's go down the end there. <sighs> Just trying to find some parking. Busy here today. So I get my three hours of clean done, get that out of the way. Um, yeah, and hopefully a day of freedom tomorrow. I really need it. Right, let's go and get this done. So it's now the next day, it's Friday, did my hike. I was exhausted after yesterday's hike. Um, I've never had such a reaction to a hike and I think a lot of it is because there were so many elevations it was a lot of climbing up and climbing down um, I felt fine afterwards and then in the evening got to about half past five and my body just shut down I couldn't move my feet hurt my knees really hurt because I was having to climb up and down so many steep gradients, which I'm not used to. And for some reason, this shoulder was really hurting in the evening, like I pulled something. And by about eight o'clock, I had a headache as well, which I presume is just, I was just so tired. Didn't sleep too badly, but I felt absolutely exhausted this morning. I still had the headache, which... I've kind of shifted now. It's almost lunchtime on Friday. I was a good hike though. Today I am not doing anything very much. The weather's supposed to be really nice, but uh, it's kind of average. Um, I've decided I'm going to make two open tarts. I'm going to do a potato, onion, cheese and tomato tart. And then I'm going to do a pear and blackberry open tart with a crumble topping. Now these pears are from, I think, earlier in the year. These are the last of my previous pick blackberries. These were bottled in 2021. Now I have others that I bottled in 2021, which are eight earlier this year, and they're fine. So I'm going to throw all that into tarts. I've taken out some of that ready-rolled, that ready-made pastry. I still have about four blocks of that in the freezer. So I'm just going to do the bases in that. Um, the cheese and potato tart I will leave open and just like get all loads of the cheese on top. And then there'll be a crumble topping for the, um, the pear and blackberry one. So that's my little task for now and then after lunch I'm going to walk down to Sainsbury's, they have an eBay pickup point there, they've got like a little Argos in there and I bought something on eBay. So I was talking about the work light which I wanted to get but it was like nearly 30 quid and I didn't buy. And then I found something else which I have bought. It's actually like a camping light, but it's got a higher LED wattage than the other one. I don't know if this is going to do the job. Um, I actually want it for a different use. But if it doubles up as a work light, 
fair enough. So I'll go and get that this afternoon. Um, so for now, I'm just going to get on and make these these tarts. So you can see me do that if you like.
this morning is Saturday. I was woken up early this morning at 7am by a lot of noise outside. And so I got up because it was a lot of noise. And I was curious about what the noise was. And a British Heart Foundation van had pulled up outside and was offloading furniture downstairs. So the new neighbours have started to move in today. Um, I do recognise them as one of the, the seven viewings so it wasn't any surprise it's a, a young-ish couple probably in their late 20s something like that um there always seems to be always seems to be a couple that moves into that downstairs flat it's weird because all the other flats all of us are single and yet that downstairs one always ends up with couples it's really weird um and i guess how the price has got out that's all people can afford around here at the moment So later on, I went out to do my weekend clean. I decided to do it all on Saturday today. And all the windows were open, which is the first time I've ever seen that in the last three years. And they were, they had face masks on. And they had like long dusters uh, cleaning stuff on poles and they were doing all the tops of the ceilings and whatever. Normally, they send in a couple of cleaners once the flat's been vacated and last night there were people in doing the cleaning. I could hear the hoovering. But the car is the same car that's here today. So I think they've come in and given it a clean or partly a clean last night. So whether they haven't sent cleaners in this time, I don't know. Um, but they're like going through the place with a fine tooth comb. So new neighbours are in kind of. So they use British Heart Foundation for their furniture, which is exactly what I did. It's just such a cheap way. Um, there aren't any good charity shops near me that do furniture. If you go down to the nearest big town, there is a, um, a furniture British Heart Foundation shop and they have tons of stuff in there. And I got all my furniture for about 250 quid and it's been fine. I've still got it all. It's good because then if I needed to move and I wasn't going anywhere where I needed to have furniture or I couldn't take furniture or I couldn't afford the van for the furniture, I can just, you know, give them a call, book them in and they'll come and take it away again. It's still in good condition. I've looked after it. Um, and then there's no, there's no incentive for me to keep it because I didn't pay you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds for a sofa suite or a new bed or something like that. Um, I have no problem with buying second-hand furniture and things like that. Saves an absolute fortune and, you know, it's easy to get stuff changed and it's not going to mean that I'm in debt for years paying it off. I remember buying a sofa suite once many, many years ago. I went to DFS and bought a brand new sofa suite and I think it became a pain because I ended up having to move and it went into storage and then I ended up just sticking it on one of those free websites and getting people to take it away because no one no one wants to buy secondhand furniture privately. Part of the problem is that you have to pick it up yourself but if you do it from a charity shop like one of the big ones um, they have delivery vans and I paid 20 quid for them to deliver it. It's so much cheaper than anywhere else and does the job. You've seen the furniture, you know what you're getting. It's perfect. So, yeah, new um, new neighbours are in. It's a windy day today, but it's warm. I've still got this banging headache from the evening that I did my hike. So it's obviously turned out to be one of those hormonal headaches rather than just a, a tired headache. But they normally last three days, so I'm hoping that uh, that will be gone by the end of the day because I feel rough as anything. I ploughed through that cleaning because it... I just wanted it done and out of the way. If I don't do it today, I'll have to do it tomorrow. Um, so that's that done. It's Saturday afternoon. And I've come out for a walk because the weather is gorgeous. But tomorrow the rain is back. So I thought I'd make the most of this and get out for a walk. In case you're wondering what this is. So, 
couldn't decide where I was going to go today. I was either going to go down and walk down a country track that's quite near me that I haven't been to for a while, or I was going to go to the cemetery, to the nice peaceful quiet place where the people are well behaved and cause no trouble. And I was going to go to the other one and I thought, nah, let's go to the cemetery, it's nice and quiet. The walk isn't nice. You have to go down busy main streets to get there, very noisy. But um, once you're there, it's worth it. And I'm wearing my new water bottle pack, which kind of fits. I need to do some work on it. It's not too bad. And whenever you come out, always bring a spare plastic bag because you never know what you might find en route. That happens to me quite a lot. I didn't bring a plastic bag, but as I was walking out the door, there was a plastic bag flying around in the street. So I picked it up, carried on on my walk, and as I was walking down the road, there's a bag hung on the railings of a, of a house. And there's a little sign on it and the bag is full of rhubarb sticks and the sign says free organic allotment grown rhubarb and so I picked some up five sticks there's enough there to do two rhubarb crumbles or if I blend it with other fruits probably three or four got my water, my pack thing, so it's the remains of my old rucksack, put my water bottle in it and I have somewhere to strap my rhubarb as I'm out walking around. I thought about getting the rhubarb on the way back but there may not be any there, so I'm walking around with rhubarb strapped to my front and I've gained myself a few funny looks. But who cares, I got free rhubarb. So I'm off the main road. I'm at the cemetery. It's very warm today, but also very windy. So by keeping out the sun, I'm going to go down to the old part of the cemetery which is more trees. What remembers lives. Any of these graves that don't get visitors. If you just read the stones and say the names, they're remembered. And I like that. But you can remember people always anyway. A few years ago, they opened up a whole new section of ground here because they were running out of space for burials and it's filling up remarkably fast. These names. Of course, that lady was only 60. It's lovely here, it's very naturistic. Next to the section that they've opened up, is a field section which I imagine one day will be full of graves but at the moment it's just been left to grow green. Right, I'll show you. spring, that is a sea of flowering meadow. It's beautiful. It's nice that I don't have to go all the way up onto the moors to get away from things and enjoy a bit of nature.
I love coming to graveyards for all sorts of reasons. It's the history, all these people. And some of these people haven't had visitors in years, I would imagine. I can see some of the dates on these. See, these look like they're 40s graves, but they're actually from the 70s. now. Got them cleaning out the way and the neighbours downstairs are banging around and getting their flat organised. I don't know how long they'll stay for. Um, you can't tell because if people know the area then they know what they're in for. But they've opened up all the windows, all the blinds and it's not very private there, so they're going to have a lot of eyes looking in if they're not careful. They've just gone out and left some of their furniture <laughs> out the front. I don't know if that's going to be there when they get back. This is the Garden of Remembrance. It's an absolute sea. Takes up far less room than graves, of course. And all the flowers are plastic. But it's pretty busy. Get a lot of visitors, I think. Can you hear that squirrel? They make funny noises. Something's annoyed him. May, may.
love some of the weird names you get here. So there's a grave here of their parents who died in 65 and 72, and then their son who died in 2023, aged 98. But his name was Wedgwood. I wonder if they collected pottery. Because that's a pretty unusual first name, I think. I don't think I've seen that before. I've seen some interesting. Interesting uh, first names in my time, but never a Wedgwood. Just got home, just prepping the rhubarb which I picked up while I was out. Met my new neighbours on the way back. They were still cleaning. They've been cleaning since about seven o'clock this morning. And I don't think they know much about renting because um, they didn't know about, you know, how to sort the water out or who they should connect with the energy, what's the energy rating like. I mean, we've got a C energy rating here and I said, and I just explain about the state of the windows and how, you know, you might want to be careful about your energy usage because it's going to get cold in the winter. You know, I think if I moved somewhere new again, I would probably knock on neighbours' doors and ask them, because you don't know what you're letting yourself in for when you move into places sometimes. And I don't think they're very rent savvy. I mean, I wasn't before I moved in here. I've never lived in my own place before on my own. Never really rented on my own. So you have to get used to these things. So they said they were, they were a bit annoyed with the letting agency. And they asked about the landlord as well. And I said, well, just be careful because the letting agency and the landlord are all the same family. Because I only found that out fairly recently. And um, they said they were a bit annoyed because, I mean, for one, the previous guys have left all their rubbish in the bins. I mean, the bins are full, basically. It's tricky because... Um, been dated on certain days. If you're not living there, you're not going to come back and just to put the bins out. And I was doing the bins for a while, trying to get them empty, but every time I emptied them, they were coming back and doing a bit more cleaning and shoving a bit more stuff into the, into the bins. So I've had to explain the bins to them because every single council round here, although we have all the same colour bins, all the colours do different things. So in the next borough to us, which is like about three minutes that way, their bin colours don't correlate with what ours are. So I've explained that to them, and most of the stuff seems to be in the right places. I've explained the, the water meter, who they need to contact about the water meter, and they're going to set up their own energy supplier, because they've got to change energy suppliers. Um, but they're really annoyed because of the state of the place. They said when they came in, they said it absolutely stinks in there. It's, it's like mouldy. And, and I said, well, yeah, the previous tenants didn't open the windows for three years, so that's part of the problem. And I said, the windows, the double glazing doesn't work properly. So I said, the windows will get very wet in winter. Because this is the stuff you want to know. If I'd known when I'd moved in, probably having to take this place anyway because I couldn't find anywhere else. At least I would have known what I was letting myself in for. But I know that the chap who lives next to me says he's going to move out next April, in part because the energy rating on the property is so awful. I mean, we are a C rating, but because the double glazing has all gone, it doesn't work properly. There's no point in putting your heat in on because you'll still be cold. So I just did them a little warning about that. They're quite a young couple. I think actually... They're probably like maybe mid-twenties. She's 
They're an Indian couple. He's been here for two years. She's been here only this year. And she is here to study her masters. And he's he works in a care home. Um, so I can, I can still hear them hoovering and cleaning downstairs. They said the mould and the damp and the dust. They said the place is filthy. I thought they cleaned and they normally send cleaners in. Um, so they've said that they have to send somebody down to clean it because the cooker is disgusting. I'm surprised. I mean, I thought that they always, maybe they don't pay for cleaners anymore. Maybe they just assume tenants will do it. And they're annoyed because they have to do their own weeding out the front, which the previous guy should have done. They're supposed to keep the weeds in check because we get a lot of weeds growing. I don't mind. I like plants, so I let all the, the weeds grow up amongst my pots so it all looks green together. Right, I'm just going to put this real guy into sugar just to help it cook a little bit. Sugar and a little bit of water just so that it will keep better in the freezer. So yeah, so I said to them, look, if you need anything, just, just give me a shout. They seem really nice. I hope they're really nice. I don't think they're going to be here for very long. They'll be on a six-month tenancy, and I think they're moving in now, September, October, November, December, January. February, I suspect their contract will be up, and they'll probably have had enough by then. But we'll see. I've put up with it because where else am I going to go because of my problems with getting accepted credit-wise because of my self-employment and whatever. Um, it's not easy for me to find other places, so I just hang on in there. And they don't know they're paying £100 a month more for that messy messy flat downstairs. I don't know that it's that bad. But I've never really been in. But I wouldn't having said that, the tenants downstairs before the ones who were just who've just left, they had a real problem with damp. And some of their furniture went mouldy. But again it's the same problem. They have all the windows shut. Nobody ever opens the windows. And the flats don't air. Now I don't know if it's because it's ground floor that they have so much damp. Because up here there's no damp at all. There's no damp, there's no mould. It gets cold up here, but it doesn't go get mouldy. Um, and I don't know if that's because I'm up on the first floor. I mean it's got something to do with it. But I also like to really air the place. I like to have the windows open and until it gets really cold I always keep the windows on vent because we have vent locks and because I'm up on the first floor I can leave them on vent all the time so my windows have been on vent since April and I never shut them until it gets really cold but even then on days when it's not too bad I will still open the windows and air the flat and mop the windows down whereas the two previous sets of tenants have just had all the windows shut, all the blinds shut, and they just ignore it. And you can see the water in winter pouring down the insides of the windows. So what I do, when it gets really cold, and only if I need it, I bubble wrap two sets of windows, only the bedroom and only the front room, because they're the two main rooms that I want to take the edge off the temperature. And then with the other windows, I just air them and mop them and open the windows. And I have a little, um, one of these little window cleaner devices. And I just go down the windows in the morning. And that'll sort it out for the day. I'll do that and then just use a cloth around the windows to get rid of the rest of the water. And that seems to do the job. But the windows are pants. They really are. I mean, all the beading's fallen out of them now. All the double glazing has popped. So you can see where they're mottled, where... You know, they're not sealed units anymore, and they're just shocking. They need to be redone, but of course no one's going to argue, because they'll say, well, there's nothing wrong with the windows, and then say, if you don't like it, move out. There's always somebody willing to take their place.
I mean, compared to the places that I was looking at before I got this, I think I dodged a bullet. The other places were horrific, and they were in posher, more expensive areas. They were much, um, much more expensive. And this had the room, the others were also a lot smaller. You know, these places have the space, which at the time when I moved in, I didn't realize I needed two bedrooms. And then of course, months, well, six months later, I, I lose the studio in town and I need somewhere to work. So I'm really lucky with that. But I wouldn't leave here until either the rent was exorbitantly high or I was pushed out because maybe they'd sell the block or because I had something else better to go to. Because what am I going to go to? What am I going to go to that's better than this? It's still a third cheaper than the rest of the area. So I still think that I'm doing okay despite everything. And there's no point in moving for the sake of it. If I was going to move, I'd have to make a good strategy and know what I was doing. But, you know, they were surprised how long I'd been here. They were like, ooh, really? Six years? That's a long time. Anyway, it's always the same. New neighbours move in and then they realise how S-H-I-T these places are. But I've lived in worse, I've lived in worse situations and you make of it what you can. I think upstairs is better than down. Um, although I don't think the chap on the other side at the bottom has the same problems they have. I think a lot of it is to do with the airing of the flat and just looking after it. But they come in and do checks every six months on the properties to check that you're not, you know, painted all the walls black or something. And I, I guess nothing's ever been said, said. Well, they do send out a blanket email as winter approaches saying, remember to air your window, air your, your flat and your windows and things. They want, <laughs> they want you to open your windows in the middle of winter when it's freezing cold and leave your windows on bed. Are you joking? I would all sh shut them when it's really cold or at night. But I do try to air windows during the day. Because it's also better for you. I don't like being in a stuffy place. I like air. Anyway, so we'll see how they get on. I'm willing to make a bet that in six months they'll be gone. We'll see what happens.